we are live. All right. Well, it's good to see everyone this afternoon. Uh, well, as everyone here knows, we're doing service outside today because we're going to be talking about the importance of the crucifixion and we're doing it by the crosses. Um, I think this will be very good service, kind of talk about the ideals, the importance, the significance of, um, you know, Christ walk and uh, on Calvary and, you know, his sacrifice on the cross. And um, I think it'll be pretty good service. Uh, I'm open up with prayer, prayer as always, and I'll give a gospel presentation if you guys would join with me. Um, dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, Lord Jesus, just thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for the gathering, and thank you just for everything you do in our lives each and every day, Lord Jesus. Just thank you for the love and grace and mercy you provide in our lives each and every day, Lord. Thank you for the blessings and memories and gatherings that we get to have, Jesus. Just thank you for all these brothers and sisters and for this fellowship, Lord. I ask that you just bless and protect this fellowship and that you bless this service, Lord, for all aspects of the service. For the teaching and just for the fellowship before and after service, Lord, I ask that you just guide our hearts, guide our minds, Lord, that the service would be a blessing and that it would be edifying to all of us, Lord, that it help us look to you and the importance of your crucifixion, of your crucifixion on Calvary, Lord. We just thank you for that sacrifice that you made 2,000 years ago, Lord. We can never repay it, and we just thank you that there's no demand on us for anything and that you've done all the work for us, Lord, and that shows how much of a loving God you truly are, and we thank you for that sacrifice, and we thank you for all the spiritual truths that we have in you, Jesus, that we are saved, sealed, justified, and sanctified all by our faith alone Amen. in you alone, Jesus. And I ask that you would just guide us all and bless us all. Bless this service, and I just thank you for everyone who could and could not make it today. In all things, do ask and pray in your holy, holy name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we'll go ahead and seven. And a uh, gospel presentation. That's that uh, Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He came down to this earth, lived the perfect life we failed to live, died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose again three days later, according to the scriptures. And in John 3.16, the most famous verse of the Bible, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It says in John 15.18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. In Romans 5.8, it says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Christ faced every emotion and everything in this world. He knows our lives. He knows our importance. And we're all humans created in his image. We all have importance. We all have significance and value and design. And we all were made in his image. And Christ was crucified on Calvary to pay for our sin. For pay for our sin. And he did. He died on the cross, and he was buried, and he did rise again three days later, according to the scriptures. And he makes Amen. salvation ab available for all men and women. And that salvation is so, so, so simple. As the most famous verse of the Bible, it says, For whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's all we got to do. It says in Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Our faith is counted for righteousness. It says in Genesis 15, 6, and Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And whenever we believe in God, it is accounted unto us for righteousness. Amen. And at the very moment we do believe we have everything in Christ. We are complete. The flesh has been done away with. The flesh, the flesh was crucified with Christ on Calvary. It's, it's all been done away with. Praise and we God. know that we are saved Praise eternally. No, nothing can take away our salvation. At the very moment we believe, we have everything in Christ. Amen. And now Amen. today, we're going to be talking about the importance of the crucifixion. It's it's still taking me, I've always said crucifixion, um, for the ones listening to this. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, or if I've just done it by habit, I don't know. But Brother Shim corrected me, and I guess it's crucifixion, so uh, just give me a minute. I might say it wrong a couple of times, but it'll be all right. Y'all uh, y'all understand what I mean. But uh, we're going to be reading Amen. Matthew 27. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Uh, I'll try to get through it pretty relatively quick, because I don't want to... Stay there too long. It is 66 verses, so if you guys want to read I, I with me, I encourage it so much. Um, if I mispronounce anything, I promise you I will. Um, <laughs> um, old names are the death of me. I cannot pronounce old names at all. So uh, I'm gonna say so, I might say some names wrong, but you'll uh, you'll get the main point. But uh, yeah, starting in Matthew 27 and verse one, it says, "When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death." And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to uh, Pon Pon Pontius Pilate. Is that how you say it? Pontius Pilate? Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. See, I already, see, I already stumbling. The governor. <laughs> and Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the 
chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is, not, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, thy field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered to him never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast the governor was wont, was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye, ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that a rather a atoma of was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the person, see ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and, our, and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when, he, and when they had plant, uh, plat, excuse me, platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of uh, Cyrene, Simon by name, whom they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called, um, it, these old names, Gagaltha, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that is to that's... say, a place of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is, the, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the another on the left. And they passed by, reviled him, wagging uh, their heads. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now. And if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, a ima sabachthani, I don't know how to pronounce it, this, that is to say, my God, my, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. Then rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and of those things that were done, and they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there, beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Among them which was Mary Magdalene, the mother 
and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock and rolled a great stone to the door of the sculpture and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sculpture. And the next day there was fo the follow the day of the preparation. The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sculpture be made unto this day, lest the disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way and make sure as ye can. So they went and made the sculpture, sealing the stone and setting a watch. That was a lot to take in. I got a little emotional just reading that. The story of Jesus and the importance of his crucifixion is just so incredibly powerful and so incredibly important. You know, as Paul says, you know, it is the gospel of our salvation, which it is. It is our salvation. What Christ did on Calvary 2,000 years ago is our salvation. Amen. His innocent blood was shed for us and by his blood we are washed we're forgiven of everything he paid that sin payment and all we got like just what i talked about in the gospel presentation all we got to do is believe in what he did for us on the cross to be saved that's all it takes and in this chapter there's so much history and there's so much to go through when talking about this but um something i will kind of want to touch on real quick before we dive into this um this is something i i think the holy spirit revealed to me but i know a decent about science and if you look in the form of physics i think i've talked about this with a couple of you but every aspect of this world and every scientific thing in this world physics if you look how light transmits if you look at ocean waves and if you look at sound waves we'll give those three examples notice how waves transmit how they orbit look they go down they go up they go down and they go up the flesh dies into the earth and the spirit rises if you look in every form of science it represents that because Christ made this world the God made this world with order with design and there's an attention behind everything I know there's a cell inside of our DNA which is a cross this world has meaning and we all individually are, are very significantly important and we all have our own meaning we all, have, we all have our own importance and Christ died for all of us it's not for God to love the world and um, it's not that whosoever believeth but the homosexual, or whosoever believeth but the thief, or whosoever believeth but the murder. No, it says that whosoever believeth, come Amen. as you are. Amen. And Christ will save you no matter your condition. And no matter your condition will never change your position with Jesus. And Jesus individually saw every single one of us on Calvary. And all the sins, past, present, and future that we do, the sins you did yesterday, the sins you do today, and the sins you'll do tomorrow, Christ paid for all of them on Calvary. Amen. In Romans 5a, I used this verse earlier. It says, But God commandeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That commandeth, meaning demonstrate. That's how that word is used. But God demonstrates his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Judas, we see at the beginning of this, he recognized that Christ's blood was innocent blood. And Christ was innocent. Christ had no fault. He had no wrong. He was God in the flesh. He was perfect. He was holy. He was just. And because of how much God truly loved us, he was willing to walk on Calvary. He was willing to have blood dripping from him, flesh dripping from his black back, walk all those miles all the way to Calvary. He was willing to hang on that cross. I know there was a video that was posted in Sniffing Server, and it talks about the excruciating pain that Christ went through on the cross. He had those, um, I'm going to say nails. I know it's not that probably properly pronounced, but those nails... Um, hang on to him by his hands and by them pinned into his feet. So whenever Christ was on that cross, the very, every time he took a breath, his chest would extend out because that's what we do whenever our lungs breathe. And when with his hands being pinned there, every time he breathed in, it would be excruciating pain. So every breath was excruciating pain. Every, every second was excruciating pain. And Christ did all of this. He faced all the trials and emotions of being a man, of what it's like living this flesh. I mean, stress. I mean, Jesus wept. Jesus cried. Jesus went through emotions. Jesus went through everything, and he paid 
for everything. And we see we have the story when they're on the crucifix, uh, when they're um, all on the cross. The good thief and the bad thief, the, thor the story of them. You know, the good thief believed, and we can uh, dive more into that topic if you guys want. But the good thief believed, and the bad thief did not. Did the good thief have time to go to church? Did the good thief have time to confess his sins to a priest? Did the good thief have time to be baptized? Did the good thief turn from his sin? No. The good thief, he simply believed. That's all he had to do. Yep. And Christ says, you'll be with me in paradise. Not, Amen. oh, you gotta go, you gotta go to church first, Amen. no. That's not what he said. So you'll be with me in <laughs> yeah. paradise. And and I've takes. heard, um, I've, I've heard false prophets also say they'll, they'll use the, uh, you know, the one that believed, you know, the, the two people aside, you know, uh, you know, next to Jesus and whatever. And the false prophet said, well, had he come off the cross, he would have given his life to Christ. He would have done X, Y, and Z. That's false. That is nowhere That's in the right. Bible. You know, Amen. you gotta watch out. You gotta mark and avoid these people. They all add anything. They don't care. Amen. You know, they, they will. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible stuff. If you even talk to people in some of those denominations, you'll say, well, what about with the thief on the cross? They say, oh, well, you know, that situation was different. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's the same. Right. That situation is <laughs> the same. <laughs> Christ did not die for the godly. Christ died for the ungodly. Ungodly. Romans 5, Amen. 6. Amen. Christ died for the sinners. Christ died for the good thief and for the bad thief. But in reality, at the end of the day, they were both bad thieves. They were both sinners. And the only difference okay. is that one believed and one did not. And we see the reality of that situation with believing versus not believing. And thank, thank Jesus for the simplicity of what he did for it on the cross. You know, to... Thank Jesus. Yeah, speak, yeah. brother. Go well. I, w I want to mention that when you went over about Barnabas, uh, he was the criminal who the religious people that they, they thought was right about being holy, being religious, basically the world system, what they believe. But it also paints a picture. Christ, he was just. And he tra we, being the unjust, he took our place, you know, and died in our place. You know, we're, we're, we're just as bad as, as the criminal. And Christ died in our place where, where that criminal would have been sent to death. You know, he took mm -hmm. the place of that criminal. Amen. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, you were mentioning the, the pain that Jesus endured on the cross. And you described it as excruciating, which is true. That word actually, excruciating, it means from the cross. It's a, it's a description of pain that is, uh, yeah. yeah, X, meaning from, crucio, meaning cross, yeah. excruciating. Dang. Amen. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, I mean, though naturally the, you know, it's a terrible thing that, you know, happened to Jesus, but um, mm. interesting that that word, yeah, excruciating. Wow, it's an interesting perspective on that now. Wow. Like you yeah. said, like you said, throwing like the the waves and everything has meaning something with the you know the death and the resurrection. It's in, very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Dude, amen. And it's you know the the crucifixion is it's so important. You know it's the embodiment of our belief. It's what Christ did for sinners. You know, like I just said, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. You know, First John four nine through ten. He was a perpetuation for us. It's not that we loved God, but that you know God loved us. God mm -hmm. loves sinners. God loved his creation. We weren't dogs. We weren't servants, but we have been made brothers, mm -hmm. joint heroes with Christ. You know, like I, like yep, I talked about earlier. God. Yeah, amen. The very moment we believe, we literally have That's everything pastor. with Christ. And the importance mm -hmm. of the crucifixion is, is so much, brother. It's insane. Yeah, therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all all men unto justification of life. Romans amen. 5 is such a wonderful chapter. Oh, um, amen. Because it talks about how we have access by faith into where it stands and talks about no, this is, how, this is you know, way. God God is the just and the justifier of them who believe in Jesus. Naturally, that's Romans talks about this, how in Adam all die and then in Christ all shall live. And then eternal amen. life. Such a wonderful thing, like what he's accomplished for us. Yeah. And yeah, I think we'll um, keep on growing in that knowledge. Amen. Um... If you would want to read um, Romans five twelve through um, twenty one, I'd be more than happy to. That talks about kind of um, it kind of talks about sin, sinful nature, 
and then kind of you know the one sacrifice um and referring to the crucifix the crucifixion of what christ did for us on calvary all those years ago um if i can read it if you want to um if yeah go you ahead, guys would be open for that yeah for sure um let's see i'm flipping there right now romans 5 starting I mean, even, verse if 12, you go to, even if you go to uh even 5 1 because it talks about we have peace with god and talks about like I, all those yeah, which, things which we just we just read a whole chapter that's um, fine yeah but, yeah I'll, I'll start from verse 12 it says wherefore as by one man sin into into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for unto the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who was the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abounded unto many and not as it was by one that sinned so was the gift for the judgment was one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound that as sin hath reigned unto death even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord Amen. How clear, how simple, how sweet. Amen. I mean, that just proves there's no room for self righteousness. Like it's, right. it says, Amen. it says Amen. not by. It says, uh, it says by the obedience of one shall many be yeah. made righteous. Amen. Not by the, your obedience and his obedience. <laughs> right. Amen. Right. Not by, Amen. right. Amen. by the Amen. obedience of one, you're made righteous, and that's the Amen. only way. That's right. That's right. That's very well said. Amen. Well said, bro. And there, there's so much scripture that talks about this topic. Um, I think one that's really coming to mind, um, is Hebrews 10. Mm. Um, Hebrews 10 is a beautiful chapter, and I'm I'm trying to look at the verses for what I wanted to talk about with um, <clears throat> one sacrifice for all. Um, give me one second, I will find it. Um, but it's it's by one sacrifice it's by what christ, you know that's kind of i've kind of made this point before but that's the difference between religion and christ i kind of just made a video not too long ago that door posted on the channel but, you know religion has such a big impact on christ and it makes people not as open to learning about christ or about the gospel because of religion's impact oh you're gonna go to hell if you don't turn from your sin you better repent mm -hmm. you better go to church you better be baptized be a good boy that's mm -hmm. that's not bible that's what religion has done has done to men it's a satanic parody of God's way of salvation that stands in the yep. way of the true way of salvation. Exactly. And, and what I'm very, talking about, it's, it's very yeah, sad. Yeah. Amen, amen. And it's not by what we do, because other religions, the Islamic faith, pray certain times a day, visit certain places, pray certain ways. Um, you have to visit certain to get to get to this holy place. Hinduism, honor certain animals, do certain uh, rituals and, pa and practices to go to their holy place. Um, Greek mythology, vain sacrifices. Um, yeah, Santa Claus. At... Santa Claus, be a good boy, yeah. Johnny, and you'll get the gift. Yeah, you can, it, you know, Satan yeah, Claus pag, is more like paganism, it. Paganism. <laughs> I mean, all of these main world religions is always you got to do something. But with Christ, it's not mm -hmm. a religion because that work has been done for you. Mm -hmm. Christ did the work. The work is done. Mm -hmm. It's not we have to do anything. Right. That Christ right. has already done everything for us. He made that payment. He did that work. Mm -hmm. And whenever we, we know by John 5, whenever we believe, that belief is not a work. And we're believing and we're trusting in Christ. Not going to church and being a good boy and uh, trying not to sin and trying not to do all of this. No. That turns into works. That's that, that, whenever we say that, we're saying that, oh, you know, Christ's sacrifice was enough, but it's not enough. In reality, we're saying, oh, it's mm -hmm. not enough. But I know yeah, by right, his innocent right. blood that was shed on Calvary, it was enough. But what he Amen. did for me on that Amen. cross 2,000 years ago was enough. And Amen. the amount of historical yeah. evidence for Christ, Amen. and you know the Holy Spirit bears witness for us. 
Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Christ bro. is the truth. What he did for us, on, what he did for us on the cross is so incredibly important. Yes. I mean, yeah, the I amount mean, of biblical manuscripts also... for the Bible. You know, the <laughs> amount of eyewitness oh, accounts yeah. for Christ. There is so much evidence you can look into for creation, existence, and you know what for Christ did in his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Might I add something to that? Actually, yeah. go ahead, kind of pertaining to like to like, like how. Christ differs from all these different like religious beliefs and whatnot, and even from like typical Christianity today. Reli- religious Christians, because yeah. yeah, yeah, religion because it's it's all based off of works, and it's not just Christian, you know, the modern day Christianity, but it's you know, of course, Judaism, Islam, like Islam, they're under law. Um, Buddhism, Hinduism, they're under some type of law, just not the biblical law. So you have all these different, you know, philosophies of man, but then you have Christ to defer from all that. You see, one thing I find kind of interesting is how a lot of times throughout Jesus's ministry, he'll cut things off at the very root of the problem. It was like, he's like, okay, here's the problem. This is, you know, how you fix it. And so whenever you look at, you know, not just the timing at which Oh, oh, hello. Ah, we can hear you. Hello? You're back. You okay. lagged. <laughs> All right. So not only the timing at which Christ came, but the fact that um, what, am I, uh, what was I trying to say? Um, he he noticed the ultimate problem, and the ultimate problem was that was sin that was the ultimate problem that's right yeah and we can't stop sinning so he offered himself up because he because he loves his creation so he died for us because he wants to Amen. save us Amen. Save right? so i find it interesting how jesus so, so I thought was using law as a schoolmaster to point out our sin and then dying for us and forgiving us of eternal life. No other right. belief does that. You see, sure, there's like some philosophies that say, oh, do X, Y, and Z, and then that might help or, you know, that's going to help. But those are vain philosophy because they don't right. give you eternal life. Christ says, believe in me Amen. and I will give you eternal life. He provides the ultimate solution to the ultimate Amen. problem, which is sin. And I find that very interesting too. Like not just the amazing ethical teachings and then like you just put that on top of it. You know, although we don't fully understand, uh, um, at least for me, I don't fully understand everything that God does, but it is pretty easy to understand that God loves us and he loves us so much that he sent Christ to bleeding down across for our sins, Amen. forgiving us of our sins and giving us eternal life, you know, because he loves his creation. He, he loves his creation. We're created in his image and he loves us. And that's very comforting to yeah. hear. And then how much more of a physical display could we need? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, Christ yes. is yeah. love. His right. life his death is love. Christ is the physical embody- yep. embodiment of love. Christ is love. You know, love I, I know lower down yeah. in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. amen. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd like to mention um, the interesting thing I've discovered maybe over like the past year. Today's we are talking about the crucifixion today. Um, like when we go to Genesis, like all the trees in that Garden of Eden were all good except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so now that we're in this valley of darkness and death, as it says in Psalms, the only tree that's good is the cross. Like Jesus has his arms open, ready to embrace us, kind of like a hug, but it's such a, like, but it's such a, it's such like a evil way of like, you know, because naturally it's just the valley of darkness and death. Like he had to die for us so that way we would go back to life again. so it's a dark, I mean, it's a light and dark way of doing it, but naturally he did the the work so that way we would go there. It's a, it's a good, you know, he did the best work possible. Um, I oh hope my people gosh, don't get, that's... I hope, I hope people don't interpret really that the cool. wrong way, but it's like, it's a deaf way of showing this love. And that's the only way that we can be reconciled by the death and the resurrection. I totally Amen. get it. It's like a picture because in the garden of Eden, there was one tree. That was bad. The yeah, tree of the yeah, knowledge of good yep. and evil. 
but yep. now it everything's flipped. Everything right. else is bad right. and darkness and a wasteland. Right. And the only light yep. that we have is Christ and what yep. he did on the tree, on the cross. Yep. Um, another thing that I, I like to mention about the crucifixion is the serpent on the pole in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus yeah. mentioned that in John 3. He said, just as the serpent uh, was lifted up on the pole in the wilderness... And anyone who looked on it would be saved. So too shall the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever shall believe on him will not perish but have eternal life. And what it was in the wilderness was Moses had a staff with a bronze serpent on it. And all the Israelites, they were being bitten by serpents and snakes as a judgment from God. But all you had to do was look at the serpent on the pole and you would be healed and you would stop being bitten. Yep. The reason I think it was a serpent on the pole is because Christ was taking our evil nature and he was taking Satan on himself when he sacrificed himself in order to defeat him. So does that make sense? Because the serpents kind yeah, of represent evil and sin and darkness. The only way to be saved from that is looking to the judgment Amen. of yeah. Satan and sin on the cross. And, and I dub, so many, I, yeah. yeah. I, I was uh, I was just gonna say that um, I've been talking to people about this, like just like as one of my like sermons or topics with like the serpent on the pole is how that like in the Matrix, like the Matrix is one of my favorite movies, like probably like one of the best movies of all time, and it talks about how we've been born into a prison, born into a prison that we cannot uh, smell or taste or touch. It's a prison for our mind, and so when we're out in this world, we we're not we don't see like these physical snakes coming at us as Christians, but it's the those spiritual wickedness. The snakes will come at you. Oh, are you really saved? Did you really believe? You know, faith is a work, or you know, sanctification is by works. Like all of these things, they're coming at our minds. The snakes are real. It's just now they're at us. So uh, you know, you know, yeah. running wolves in sheep's yeah. clothing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, amen. Well said, bro. Uh, there's so many, I think, physical, what's the word, physical displays of Christ or, like, um, relations in the Bible. Like, Shim, could you explain the um, thing with um, Isaac and Abraham? Yeah. And, like, the physical representation of... So, yeah, God, go told, God told Abraham to go up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice Isaac. And so, Abraham and Isaac made a travel to Mount Moriah. And Abraham had Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice, the burnt offering on his back up the mountain, which I think was foreshadowing what, what Christ would do when he was carrying mm, his cross. Mm. Also, scholars believe that Mount Moriah is the same general area as Golgotha, where Christ was crucified. Um, you know, th this was thousands of years before Christ, at least a thousand, I believe. But they went up to the mountain with Isaac carrying the wood. And Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac because God told him to. But then before he did it, God said, stop, what are you doing, Abraham? And well, long story short, God provided the sacrifice himself. God said, I will provide a sacrifice myself. And there was a ram with its head in the thorns which was used as replacement for Isaac for the sacrifice. I think it's interesting that the ram had its head in the thorns also. So they killed the ram instead, uh, instead of Isaac. And I think that's a perfect foreshadowing of what mm. Christ would do for us. He would take our place. Amen. Oh right, my gosh. Yeah, 11, Christ, right? He had a crown of thorns. That yeah, is exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and even on the same mount, it's yeah. That yeah. every time you say that, I'm in awe. It's like, just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think like in Hebrews 11, where they talk about faith and things, like Abraham knew that God would provide the sacrifice yeah. other than Isaac. Isaac being, he knew yeah, Isaac, Isaac would be the, the seed. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, he knew yeah. that God would provide, and he had faith that that you know that God would provide that thing. Like uh, Jehovah Jireh, right? God, the provider. I believe that's what mm -hmm. it means. Like God will provide. And he's always yeah. the provider for us. He's provided us eternal life. He's provided us the inheritance. We're just in a position of receiving the riches and 
you know, of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how we yeah, live. Yeah, and notice, right? also, you just opened another thing up. Um, Isaac, oh, man, I'm forgetting now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgetting now. Oh, man, oh, my gosh, it was interesting, too. <laughs> it's all right, don't, um, don't stress, brother. <laughs> you can pass baton to me if you want. Yeah. Yeah, go, sure. go on. Go for it, <clears throat> <laughs> well, not really. It doesn't really have anything to do with Isaac, uh, so I just want to give Shim the, the you know time to think about that. But uh, you know, I know it's a really interesting connection in uh, in John, uh, like John chapter three verse sixteen. Of course, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, a lot of people get stumbled yeah. uh, after uh, verse eighteen. Um, and, and I, I just want to point this out really quickly. Like, I'll just read it through. That way, it's not confusing. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh, and this is the condemnation that the light is come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest. Uh, now it's like, well, wait a minute. A lot of people see verse 21, and they're like, wait a minute. The truth? Oh, am I doing the truth? What is the truth? And obviously, we know now, Jesus claims he is the truth. Jesus says uh, in John 14, yeah. 6, I am the way, the truth, and yeah. the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Uh, John, uh, John 47, let me see. Yeah. John 47 to 48, uh, or six forty seven forty eight. 48. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Uh, same chapter, John 6, 28, 29. Uh, then they saith unto him, what shall we do that we might work? Uh, work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So, I just wanted to, uh, I just found that really interesting. Amen. It really clears up uh, the Amen. whole confusion in that yeah, verse. It's, it's a little bit of a play on words when he says that it could join them and not be killed. But if he rode in on a white horse, that was for battle. Ah, and you ah, would be, you would be killed. Wow. Yeah, so I right. thought that was yeah, interesting. That's, wow. the, that's the, his first coming and his second coming. The first yeah. one he's wow. going to ride on the donkey. The second one he's going to ride on that white horse. Amen. Amen. Something to mention actually about the donkey. So I looked up a picture a uh, while back, I should say, and on the back is a picture. It's like it looks like a cross for the hairs on the back of the donkey. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> interesting. I have some scripture that I want to read that I found in Hebrews 10. And uh, starting in verse 9, it says, Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Notice the wording there. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. This talk, this um, chapter is talking about um, how there's no longer need for an old, old Testament sacrifice on the, on the altar. Verse 12, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their uh, into their hearts, and in their minds I'll write, and the, their minds will I write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now where the remission of these is, there's no more offering for sin. It's talking about, that's going into another chapter. But kind of what I wanted to focus on, or another topic, what I wanted to focus on right there is the offering of Jesus is permanent. It's once for all. It is our everything. It has perfected. I mean, we are perfected because of Christ, not our flesh, of course. But Christ, because Christ, because remember, we have to remember that Christ isn't looking at our flesh. 
because you know it talks about second corinthians 3 whenever he's looking at us he sees himself that's because Amen. of the spirit that's because we believe in him his righteousness dwells inside of us the very moment we have our faith in him by the Amen. which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all and uh, I, we were reading, I think we were talking about James, maybe. But Dor made a topic in Romans 4, talking about sin, like past, present, and future. Yes. Um, And it's in Romans yes. 4, verses, I think, 6 through 8, if I'm not mistaken. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So, kind of talking about that, um, all sin is forgiven. That's kind of what I'm trying to say, is all sin is forgiven, past, present, and future. Not just the sins of yesterday or the sins of today, but sin all the sin, even the sins of our children, has all been paid for. Every single sin, all of it, all was paid for on that cross. Hey Amen. That's all of it. that's a really all important point. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Yep. Yeah. 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 Hey Amen. Um, I mean, important point. It, the fact that, like, like there's something to really drive here, and that's the fact that, like, you are inseparable the moment you believe from God. You are you are inseparable. Uh, Jesus makes this point very clear, John 10, 28 and 29, one of my favorite verses, and he says this, mm -hmm. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So, it's very Amen. clear. Can't separate yourself Amen. from God. Amen. 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 The book of John is Even so important now. too. I know the book of John mentions the word believe 99 times in it. <laughs> you know, the book of John is very well proves the essence and the deity yes. of Christ. And, um, and I mean, the, there's uh, so much. There's, yeah. there's so much. If all John, is, John is a wonderful book. Yeah, if I was to have only like one book of the Bible, it probably would be John because it's the gospel, like very much summarized pretty well. It has the grace of God and the crucifixion. And of course, like what you said, you know, believe is in there like, like what, 99 times? So, so I think that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, John and I Roman, also I'm think glad we have good. more yeah. than just the book of John, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amen. I think it's worth mentioning that in the book of John, because I've heard this before and I said, you know what? I'm going to do this myself to make sure that it's true. The book of John, there is no mention of the word repent. The only word mm -hmm. that is throughout there is believe. Amen. Which is true. more simple too. John's you know, got 99 and, and, believes yeah. it and repent ain't one. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> like what? Well, it's funny that there's believe 99 times as well. Kind of talking about the parable. I don't know where it's at, but like the lost sheep, how Christ will leave the 99 and go for the one. So yeah, it's kind yeah. of. In oh yeah, that about. is interesting. So, yeah. yeah, and Matthew. Yeah, yeah, and um, even um Romans eight thirty eight through thirty nine. You know that nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in yeah, Christ amen. Jesus. Amen. Goes back to slender. That's you know right. your point on the John ten. You know, um, yeah. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I'm convinced amen. that it might be that like Jesus. Uh, I mean, Jesus lived up to the standards of the law. Um, he, I mean, and beyond that, uh, cause he is God. Um, he's a unique begotten son of God. Uh, like we are not like him and yet, uh, he became flesh. So he became like us. Uh, and, and what's so, what's so, so interesting is like, uh, how he, how you say, you know, like for example, uh, Jesus struggled, right? Like, Jesus didn't want to go through the pain of the cross. Uh, like, you'll see how he struggles, uh, I believe. Uh, pff, I, think, I don't remember the exact location of where this happened. Uh, but uh, he before he like, he prays for the cup to be passed from him. Uh, he, he prays that, you know, that, that he just wouldn't go through it. But then he says, like, not my will, but your will. Um, and that just goes to show, like, God, like, for God so loved the world, he did send Christ to suffer for us. And it is, I mean, what a, 
absolute declaration of love. As we've been talking about, God loves loves sinners so much that he would die for them. Um, Amen. And he's not at all surprised Amen. by our sin. And when people today, they're like, oh, you know, you know after you believe, you got to stop sinning. It's like, he, God is not surprised by our sin. And I, I, yeah. I love, um, like, Romans 6 through 8, because I'm still growing in it, you know, but yeah. it's the idea that we've been baptized into his death and raised in the likeness oh, of amen. his resurrection. Amen. And, I'm, I'm and we've been that. identified, no, we, you know, we're, we are, we're identified with his death. So in order to overcome sin, we don't overcome it by our own efforts. We just rest that he died to sin for us once for all. And now we rest in that that victory that he won for us because we could not right. do it. Yeah. We cannot Amen. do it in our own efforts, which is just wonderful. Amen. Yeah, Amen. and he raises Romans. us up with yeah. his life. It's his life. Amen. It's his life Amen. in Amen. our Amen. life. Amen. Romans 6, 3 through 11. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead un indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beautiful. Um, what you were talking about with Christ following the law, um, I think this is kind of a secondary mm -hmm. issue, but yeah. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of knowledge on it. Uh, I think we had a conversation about it the other day. I think Dor does disagree in Christ following the law. From kind of the standpoint I look at it, Shimi, you might have some knowledge on this too. I'm not for sure. But Christ came to fulfill the law. Christ was the fulfillment of the right. law. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. Amen. And I, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of knowledge in this topic. I know Dor does. Um, why do this is a secondary issue? I kind of don't know where my standpoint is at, but I don't think Christ exactly. I don't want to say the wrong words here, but I, well, what like, I do know is that Christ came to fulfill the law. That's what I can say. Yeah, that like yeah, Christ, he's, and he uh, says that himself. Well, the, uh, yeah, and that's and that's very I have clear. To say something in regards to this. Yeah. So ahead, the law was made for the unrighteous, not the righteous. Yeah, you know, and right. Christ never kept any of the law because, you know, he healed on Sabbath. So there's that. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, like, I, I had know, a conversation Christ, with Dor about it, and he mentioned that. Yeah. Right, yeah. And because I used to be under that guise before I came to understand the truth on it. And, and, you know, I used to think, you know, well, Christ kept the law for us. No, he didn't. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. The law is the Amen. shadow. Christ Amen. is the reality. Yeah, I was just going to yeah, say, yeah, yeah well Christ said. is the of the law is the shadow, and Christ, yes, is the reality of it. Yep. He's Amen, the, yeah. the righteousness well said, of, the, of the law being manifested in Christ. Christ is the yeah. Let me, let me find that. that scripture. It's in. It's no, in it's Romans. God's righteousness is manifested. Yeah, Romans. Without Romans the law. three. Yeah. And yep. go, well yeah. said. And of course, that's why we you know get to have conversations like this. It's not just a pastor yes. on a pastor behind a pulpit. We're all learning from each other. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I know there's a lot Amen. of things. I, I'm sure there's a lot of things she knows that I don't know, and I'm sure I know some things that she doesn't know. And it's the same for all of us, you yes. know. And the Lord uses our right knowledge, and He works in us individually and in so many different ways. And we can learn from one another through the Spirit. Amen. So, yeah, amen. Perfecting uh, no the way, body of Christ. Yeah, it's right here. It's uh, Romans three twenty one. <clears throat> but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, amen. Well said. Amen. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh, who not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, now, if you look at that from my lens of law, you're going to think, oh, you're talking about the God, like, a, you know, God's law and you have to, you have to maintain it. But obviously, we know now it's it's not the case. The spirit of life is that Holy Spirit. That is the moment we believe, wording. we're sealed. Uh, 
with the Holy Spirit. And now we're made free from that yeah. bondage of the law and death. Amen. Uh, that comes from yeah, sin. Here's the thing. It can't be talking about the law of commandments and ordinances because Paul specifically says that the law... Uh, I forget. Oh man, the sting of death. Well, that the, the law is about? was a ministration of condemnation and death. Yes. So it can't yeah, be yeah, the law of the spirit of life. It can't be the. I want to pull up some verses. For for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Yeah, amen. Romans ten four. He's in okay, four. here are some Romans snippets seven. from uh, Romans seven. So this is before Romans 8, where he talks about that there's no condemnation of them in Christ Jesus who walked after the flesh, but after the spirit. So, um, okay, here we go. Uh, wherefore of a law, this is in Romans 7. Wherefore of a law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Uh, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might uh, pierce sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal soul under sin. For, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, but to will is, uh, let's see, sorry. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And I've Amen. jumped like to different verses in there, but those are the ones I highlighted that give me Amen. the most sense of peace and joy, knowing that, you know, that we're, we're dead to the law. We cannot perform that which is good. And um, we serve the law of God with our mind, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And now there's no condemnation to us who walk in that light, knowing that we're accepted in the beloved. Amen. Amen. And it's kind of interesting. Some clarity on Romans six as well. So yeah, Amen. Yeah, I just want to say it's kind of interesting how Paul himself is writing this. So we can we can know just based off that right there that it's not repentance of sins because of Paul is basically claiming to be a sinner because he has believed in Christ and he's writing these letters. Well. He hasn't repented of his sins. He simply believed in Christ and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Amen. I think Paul is very humble regarding knowing that, you know, he is a sinner. I mean, if you look at all of his epistles, the least of all the saints, a chief of sinners, I am nothing. I am the least of the apostles, the least of all the saints. Uh, oh, wretched man that I am. That that I, right, that I right. love, I don't do. You know, Paul is a true, has a very true humbleness mm -hmm. and gives all praise and all glory to God. Yeah, um, yeah, it's no, like Paul's uh, glory yeah, in the very, cross of our yeah, Lord Paul, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Paul very well recognizes that he is a sinner. You know, I think there's um, it's in Acts, in one of the stories in Acts, but also in First Corinthians that people give praise to Paul, like start to idolize Paul, and um, it talks about it in Acts and in First Corinthians. I don't know where at exactly. Um, Dora sent me the script. Actually, I don't know, but Dora sent me the scriptures, and whenever these people were trying to give praise to Paul, Paul pointed them back to Christ. I can't. I don't know the word right, exactly, but right. you know, don't worship me. Worship Christ. You know, look to Christ. I, this is. I actually know. I'm going to go to the scripture now. If anyone like else has anything for, to say, yeah. go I for think it. The one like you, like First Corinthians and First Corinthians one, potentially. I'll be right back. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'm gonna. Yeah, you're good, brother. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find the scripture myself. I know I have it in my notes. But, like even um, throughout the epistles, it's like you know, like you're a sinner, I'm a sinner. Let's talk about Christ and come together. You know, let's you know. Let's come together in peace, knowing that you know God is you know for us and not against us. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean that's what Jesus did with the with the you know the adulterous woman. You know, neither do I condemn you. You know, um, it's all that grace atmosphere. Oh, good. Yep. Yep. Amen. Yep. Paul definitely um, had the I Holy had, Spirit. I had, I had marked out of my notes First Corinthians three one through fifteen. Um, let's see if this gives any clarity. Uh, and I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? 
For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But by ministers, by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted that Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Yes, so this is the right one. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Amen. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man is his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon his his upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yes, so as by fire. So, um, yeah kind of God, God giving the increase, you know, not looking to Paul or to Paul, not looking to his people, but looking to Christ. And that's the same thing that Paul did here was pointing them back to Christ because only God can give the increase. So yeah. Amen. amen. And uh, I know it talks, Acts. I don't know if it's with Paul exactly. I have it written down. I think it was in Acts 14 where people, it may, I think they were trying, I think they were worshiping Greek gods or something. And Paul tries to point them back to Christ or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it's talking about. But um, it is a little bit off topic. Um, Slender, where is the uh, uh, recording app? Um, what do you mean? Like how many minutes? Uh, we'll give or take. We're about, mm, I think like over a little over forty-five minutes. I've had the reset here and there. Okay. Okay. Um. You guys, you guys, guys. Uh, so circle, kind of just to circle back. Uh, real quick, yeah. a small point. Cool, um, like, cause, cause it all comes back to like, you know, how it's the, the Holy Spirit. You know, like, like we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, uh, and I just, I love Jesus' promises regarding, uh, like he, he, he put the words, the Comforter, you know, which, which is the Holy Ghost. Um, I'll, I'll just read, Amen. uh, John fourteen twenty six uh, and twenty seven, says, uh, and this is Jesus speaking, by the way. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, notice that, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, and that's, yeah. now, to me that's really true to my experience. Uh, the moments where I'm like, why do I even believe? Why, why, why do I believe Christ? And then he brings back like all the evidence and remembrance, all the, uh, you know, what he did, how much love he had for me when he was on that cross. And I'm like, it's surreal. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I don't even know why I, I doubted, but that's the nature of the flesh. Um, I also want to read uh, John 16. I, I just love the book of John. It's my favorite Amen. book. Uh, John 16, 13 to 15. How bet when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he, sh he will shew you the things to come. He shall glorify me, uh, for he shall receive of mine and shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he take of mine and shew it unto you. So showing grace right there in light of how evil we are. Uh, so Amen. just, Amen. I mean, that's, that's an incredible promise that is being fulfilled even to this day. Amen. Did you have some scripture for the clip? No, not so much scripture. Just, you know, I just got back home recently. I was in the car Turning home, and I don't know if it was Brother Sheen that mentioned something about you know there's two on the uh, two next to Jesus on the cross, one believed the other didn't, and so just just I had a realization of like it's 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 you know it's simple you know believe or not you know that's, grace that's all it is. law it's it's all it's 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 always by grace that's it never law and you know yep. believe yep. and that's it you know there's only two types yeah. of people in the world 
believers and unbelievers. There's two types That's of right. people. You know, righteous by Christ through faith or the law of self-righteous folk. That's it. Yep. That's yeah. all it is. Amen. Well, well said, bro, because that's the truth. The Amen. unrighteous Amen. versus the righteous. The unrighteous are the unbelievers, and the righteous are the believers. And, and even with the Garden of Eden, we know, you know, the tree of life and the knowledge and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know, there's two trees. You know, try yep. the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law, the tree of life, Christ. Simple. Amen. So simple. Amen. Well said. Um, if anyone doesn't have anything else to say, um, you guys good with ending it or? Yeah. 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 With that. I think we're good with I think that. Just, uh, if it's, if it's fine, just like yeah. one more. Yeah. I'll start at chapter 19 and you get 21. Second Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconcil reconciling the world unto yeah, himself, yeah, not imputing fine. their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he, this is this is key right here. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God Amen. in him. Amen. 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 That's a Wonderful great verse. To to leave off. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful point to leave off of. But um, you know, the importance of the crucif the crucifixion is just so important, and we could sit here and I believe talk about it truly all day. Um. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what Christ did for us was enough. And we can end off Amen. on that note. That what he did for us was enough. In the very moment we believe in what he did for us, we have everything. We are it is finished. It, it is, finished. is finished. That is right. Amen. Oh, yeah. He meant that. Said. When he said right, it is anyone, finished, he meant it is finished. That's right. Amen. Does anyone want to volunteer to close with prayer? Or I can. Or I think I can do it. Or step stepping if, if he wants yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah step and go for uh, it. You sure? All right. Fight All right, for it. enough. No, I'm just <laughs> Heavenly Father, <laughs> Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, uh, we thank you for allowing us to come here this afternoon, this evening, and to preach you, you know, Christ and, and Him crucified. Uh, we thank you, you know, for the uh, platform of YouTube, and uh, we pray, you know, that, that this helps and benefits others in the future, you know, when they look on this video. And uh, we just thank you, Jesus, that you died for our sins according to the scriptures and that you were buried and that you rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, and that we have access to you by faith wherein we stand and we wait for the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.